Welcome to Rants and Reels. Tonight, I'm seeing Alita, Battle Angel. Don't laugh at me. I'd rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. There are watchers all over the city. Destroyed the girl called Alita. Don't underestimate who I am. Alita, Battle Angel, ready PG-13, February 14th. <laughs> All right, I've just seen Alita, Battle Angel. Don't mind the laughing. There's a, an adolescent <laughs> over here that doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> I've just seen Alita Battle Angel. It's as close as we can get to a live action Magna. Mangana. Magna. What is it? What is it? Manga? 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 Mango! Manga. 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 It is as close as you can get to a live action manga, a, a Japanese comic book. It's as close as you can get to to that that I, ever, unless you're unless you're unless you're animating. So in in that way, I. It's, it's a groundbreaking film in terms of uh, performance capture, motion capture, uh, extremely lifelike, uh, photorealistic uh, animation um, from what a, a computer generated characters. So it was just, it was visually stunning as far as that goes. Uh, all the credit for that definitely belongs at, at the feet of Robert Rodriguez. Uh, James Cameron uh, did uh, the, produ the producing and uh, a good portion of the screenwriting. Uh, this was based off a, 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 a mag magna, magna, I hate that word, I can never pronounce that word, a comic book <laughs> <laughs> it was technically it'd be a graphic novel to be the size of it. it. It's a massive, yes, it's a massive, uh, <laughs> very long running, very very long running comic series, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Manga. But that's okay because I will put the name of the comic down here. So James Cameron. Uh, wrote it and produced it. Uh, I, I do believe his primary intention in in producing this particular film was to use it as a vehicle for future projects as far as animation goes. Uh, this is probably very, very uh, similar to what we are going to see uh, animation quality-wise for his next Avatar films. But we're not talking about that, and we're not talking about James Cameron, because for as much as he contributed to the film, he didn't contribute uh, very much positive. Uh, his script and his dialogue, his, his writing, uh, I'm not a big fan of James Cameron's writing. It feels very stale and stagnant, too, too grounded. So it's very hard to tell a fantastical science fiction story when you are so grounded and rooted in reality. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, on the other hand, is incredibly versatile in his use of visuals and the way he visually directs a story. He can tell a story, uh, a comprehensive story, without a stitch of dialogue. So that it was, it was a fantastic film to watch. 
I can forgive every bit of uh, kitschy, cliched uh, dialogue because that's what you see in these comics. It's uh, very melodramatic. Uh, you have you have the the melodrama melodrama of that uh, narrative, which is by a very na by its nature contrived and overwrought and you you couple that with uh, these uh, vignettes these these shots uh, the way Robert Rodriguez set up his shots they could very easily have just just be uh, still panels from from a book from this book from this comic book so it's beautiful the way he translated that. Uh, as far as the characterization goes of Alita, uh, she was adorable. Deadly, but adorable. Uh, it was, she was instantly, uh, an, an instantly appealing character. Very easy to like. And even though she is an alien character, not literally, but she is, she's a 300 year old cyborg. And, and this is a film that takes place, you know, sometime in like 2500, 2560 or some, something along those lines. So very far removed from what we are, where we are right now. But she was still a relatable character, which was which was fantastic. What was that? Twenty five fifty three. Twenty five fifty three. I was close. Mm -hmm. So Alita: Battle Angel was a very fun film to watch. In its own right, it's up there with with high art science fiction films. Uh, it it holds its own against some of the best animated uh, anime, um, like Akira. It's it is up there. It may not be up there as far as you know scripting, dialogue, story, but it's okay. The story was enough that it could, that it could hold its own and be interesting and captivating. And you can, you can just be, be swept away. Uh, if you do have the option to see this film, in IMAX, IMAX 3D, it's worth it. They they filmed they filmed a good portion of this film with uh, stereo IMAX 3D cameras, so it was filmed in 3D. Uh, it's not converted, so very it's worth it. I know it's expensive. But every now and then, a film is very visual and is worth a little bit of extra ex expense. Just, you know, leave the kids home. Go by yourself so you can enjoy the film. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> She loved the film, but she's, we're not going to put her on camera because she doesn't, she doesn't want to be on camera. That's okay. I never said that. <laughs> Thank you for watching Rants and Reels. Go check out Alita Battle Angel. I think you'll be surprised and happy you did. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, everybody.